Hi everybody, Craig here from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to look at our Fornova sword. The original of this piece is in a private collection and it's a piece we decided to replicate because we wanted to look at a couple aspects of this sword. It's got an elegant tapered blade, very sharp point, uh, really moves nicely in the hand. It only weighs about two and a half pounds. And we actually picked this piece to replicate because I wanted to explore some of the aspects of how this sword moved when it was actually being used. One of the things that this sword has was a very tight grip. You see this in a lot of medieval swords. A lot of people today say, well, I've got big hands. I want to have a long grip. This is probably not necessarily what they would have asked for in the period because they have a lot of grips where you have a very tight action to the hand. So in this piece, the hand is seen to touch the guard and the pommel at the same time when you have it on there. And it really allows you to do a lot of false edge cuts with a lot of power because you're driving it off the back side of the hand and is uh, one of the swords that really kind of brought that to the fro. I know I've mentioned it in other videos, but this is when we did this replica, this is the one that kind of started me really thinking about how that type of action worked in the sword. Uh, we named it after the Battle of Fornovo, which happened uh, south of Parma, right near the end of the 15th century when Charles VIII of France had invaded Italy. Uh, you saw his uh, pretty modern French army with artillery and Swiss mercenaries kind of decimate a bunch of Italian city-states, trying to uh, get control of Naples, uh, then decided to leave, and you have the Battle of uh, Fornovo happening as he's trying to get out of Italy, and you see some excellent depictions of that battle, and you also see some things where uh, the troops that were used, Swiss mercenaries and Balkan mercenaries, and artillery, kind of the, the indications of what war would become in that period of time of the Italian Wars. This was kind of the first battle of the Italian Wars. Uh, so this elegant sword, it's about 37 and a half inches long. It's about 32 inches in the blade length, just under. But the grip, as I said, is only 3.2 inches. So it's real tight to the hand. These interesting swords have a real nice aspect to them in that they're light, fast, easy to use, good for somebody that's on the move, and uh, would be an excellent choice for a single-handed sword. Check it out, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.